Hey guys, it's was Breton here. Today we're going to talk about all the settings in Yuzu. This video is going to have a few different sections. The first section is advanced graphical settings. First we are taking a look at GPU accuracy. Normal should give about 10 to 20% better performance while sacrificing accuracy. Some games may not render normally while using normal, but Tears of the Kingdom runs just fine. Sometimes high is needed to render the game properly. Extreme should never be used, it's only there for debugging. Now we're taking a look at ATSC recompression. This reduces the amount of VRAM used by the GPU. It should help for lower VRAM cards, but it may cause a little bit of lag. We're looking about 1.5 GB of VRAM reduction on the RTX 3080. Cards above 8 GB of video memory should use their own compressed setting. Anything else should use BC3 or BC1. Now we're taking a look at the async presentation. What this setting does is moving the presentation into its own separate thread. This in theory could improve performance, but in some games it may introduce stuttering. Tears of the Kingdom seems to actually improve performance in here. The timeline looks way clearer with the async presentation on. Of course, maximum clocks. What this setting does is making sure your GPU always runs at its maximum performance. Sometimes high-end GPU may don't clock because user is not pushing them hard enough. This setting is supposed to fix that. Enable reactive flushing, turning this off causes Tears of the Kingdom grass to disappear and many other issues. It improves rendering accuracy for the cost of performance. Decode ATC textures asynchronously, uses the CPU to decode ATC textures, eliminates ATC decoding stuttering at the cost of visual bugs for Tears of the Kingdom, should be turned on for other games. Asynchronous Shader Builder Decodes shaders out of order using out the CPU trace to reduce the sh shader building stuttering. Having this setting turned on breaks fuse icons for Tears of the Kingdom. Too, the stuttering is reduced, it's not that much. This is what broken icons look like. It's probably not worth to use this setting. Use fast GPU time hack. This setting should improve performance and reduce RAM usage. It also makes sure the game never switches the resolution dynamically. This should always be left on. It's mandatory for the Xenoblade series and Luigi Mansion 3. It's a belief that this causes the game to crash, but I never had a crash with this on. Use Vulkan Pipeline. Forces the Vulkan shaders to save in the storage. Instead of saving in the GPU drivers, this option improves shader building speed and loading speed. Anisotropic filtering drastically improves the quality of textures on the ground with no performance impact. Apply anisotropic filtering for all mip map nodes. This setting improves and isotropic filtering for the following games Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild could introduce artifacts for several games such as Mira Automata, Bayonetta 3, Fire Emblem, Three Houses and Xenoblade Chronicles Sync the frame rate of the video playback This ensures that the video is always playing at the correct speed and not slowing down or speeding up Section 2 Graphical Settings First we have API Vulkan is the default option, it's a, it should always be used, it's fast, reliable and renders the game better. OpenGL is the legacy API. Older games may be more stable on OpenGL, but newer games will always be better on Vulkan. OpenGL options. GLSL is the default backend for OpenGL. It has fast performance but bad shader building. Guasm is only available for Nvidia. It has less performance but better shader building and less accuracy. Spear V is a Vulkan OpenGL backend. It's very experimental and very unstable. This pipeline cache. This makes it so the shaders are loaded and saved instead of being built every single time. Asynchronous GPU emulation. This uses an extra CPU thread for rendering, should always be left on. Accelerate ATC texture decoding, enabling this uses C GPU to decode ATC textures instead of your CPU. Some older GPUs like the Pascal and Maxwell series may have a problem with this setting. It's recommended to always have this on. Windows adapting filter. This is personal preference. I recommend to use FSR or Bilinear. Gaussian is gonna make your image look very blurry. Anti-aliasing method is a personal preference. I would recommend using F SMAA if your GPU can handle it. FXAA is a little bit less costly, but it should not affect performance. Regardless, VSync method. Mailbox is the recommended setting. FIFO is standard VSync. Intermediate is VSync off. Turning VSync off causes screen tear. CPU section. There's only one setting, CPU accuracy. Auto is the recommended setting. You should probably not never change it. Accurate makes your performance very bad. Unsafe, some people claim make improve performance, but from everything I tried, unsafe does not improve performance even if you turn on, on Fuse FMA. Now we're going to talk about what are the recommended settings. These are the recommended settings for Tears of the Kingdom. Feel free to pause the video to check them out. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you want to support me, I have a coffee link in the description. If you want to join an emulation community, you can always join our Discord server in the description down below.